Hello class, welcome to this uh, chapter one review guide. So uh, we're going to uh, put a focus on lessons four through eight. Uh, that's gonna be the main focus. Uh, there's gonna be some multiple choice related to uh, lessons, the earlier lessons, but for the most part, when we're looking at the free response stuff, it's gonna be mostly focused on four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, so this is why I made this um, video, so you can kind of review the questions we did in class. Uh, and some extra ones here and we'll do another video for the chapter one practice um, so here we go so uh, here we're learning target 141 we're making a stem plot so we want to make a stem plot of the following data here for 17 unwrapped Snickers fun size bars um, all right okay so uh, first off uh, we're going to uh, do it two ways we're gonna do it with uh, with splitting and without splitting right so you can kind of see uh, how to do both uh, so we're going to do um, no splitting first. All right, so we got no split, just a regular stem plot. Um, so for here, this this uh, smallest stem is 15, and the largest stem is 19. So we got uh, 19, uh, yeah, right here, 19.2. So we're going to go from 15 to 19 on the stem side. Now remember, we do not want to skip stems, even if we don't have any um, stems, you know, any numbers for, you know, 17, for example, or whatever, we still don't want to skip uh, if it's in the middle of the stem plot. But here we go. So 15, we got a leaf of nine, right? For that, remember when you do the leaves, you order them from least to greatest. So we're done with 15.9. Now 16.0, that is the leaf, right? Um, and then 16.5, five is the leaf, right? So we got 16.0, so we got a zero for a leaf. We need to go to the next biggest. Uh, there's no 16.1s or anything like that, but there's a 16.5, there's two of them. So I'm gonna do that, five, two fives for the leaf. Um, I got a 16.6 over here. We got a 16.7, uh, so number seven there. We got a 16.8, so fantastic. So uh, those are our 16s, and then we're gonna go to 17s. So we don't have any 17.0s, but we got a few, a couple 17.1s. So there we go. Uh, we got another 17.1 over here. Uh, looks like we got 17.3, and then we got 17.4s, a couple of them at least. Um, we got 17.7, two of them, and 17.8. All right, and we got, um, so this is a prime example. No 18s here, but we do not want to skip that, right? And we got 19, uh, we got a 19.2, and that's it. Okay, and when you do this, do not forget to do the key. Now, you can do the key, the key um, works for both of them, so you only have to do the key once. Uh, so I'm going to do the key here, but I'm going to do it once. So here you pick a number, pick whatever you want. Here I'm going to say 15 slash 9 represents. So what do these numbers represent, right? So these are decimals first off. So 15 slash 9 is 15.9. 15.9 what though? It says masses and grams. So 15.9 um, so represents, I'm going to put this, represents a mass. of unwrapped Snickers fun size bars of 15.9 grams. All right, and there's my key. So now we're gonna do it with splitting. So let's, uh, let's split the stem. So we're gonna split. So here, if we split, we're gonna have two of each right now we only have to do 115 um, because so we only have to do 15 once normally you have two 15s right um, but then uh, the numbers from 0 to 4 go here and the numbers from 5 to 9 go here well there's only a leaf of 9 so that means I don't actually have to include uh, anything in this row so I can actually skip that row so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the leaves from 5 to 9 here all right, and there's a nine there, so I'm gonna make sure I um, put include that here. Now, uh, 16s. Now we're gonna for, from now on, you know, we're gonna do doubles unless you know 
we, we can only skip in the beginning but we can't skip after that or you know or near, at the very end we can skip but we can't skip in the middle right so you have two 17s so we have two 18 so again splitting the stem you have two of each stem um with the um exception that here we got 19 so that's going to go 19.2 is going to go there now the number there are no numbers from for this one so i can actually skip that right so that's the exception all right but i can't skip anything else all right so now 16 i gotta include the number the leaves from zero to four so that only includes that zero so it's got to go here the numbers from five to nine are there and they have to go uh, in the second row All right, here for 17, these are the these go in that first row of 17. And then these go in that second row. All right, uh, 18s, there are no 18, so you don't want to write anything there. All right, so there's our split stem plot. And again, that uses the same key. That's how you do it. So that takes care of that one. Uh, so now let's look at the next question. So the next question uh, here is they want us to, uh, here's the stem plot. So, okay, so now this is with splitting the stem. So this is what we did earlier, actually. So interestingly enough, it's the same answer. Uh, so uh, yeah, we got the same thing. Uh, 15 slash nine represents a mass of 15.9 grams. That's fine. We included more details in our um, key, which is always better to include more details. Uh, all right, so the manufacturer claims that the average mass of Snickers fun size bars is 17 grams. Assuming the claim is true, what percent of the bars in this bag have masses greater than average? Um, so greater than average. So that means for part A, um, so we have to have greater than 17. So uh, that means one, two, there's, or actually, sorry, uh, 17, 17 is the same thing as 17.0, right? So we need greater than 17.0. So uh, that's got to be 17.1. So all these are greater than 17.0, all those. Okay, so that includes all of that. So let's let's add those up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 10. So that's going to be 10 out of 17 in total. So we got 10 out of 17 times 100 is 58.8%. So 58.8% of the bars ha have masses greater than 17 grams. Okay. Um, all right. So here we go. So part B, uh, describe the distribution of Snickers fun size bar masses. So when we describe stuff, remember, we need to include the shape, outliers, center, and spread. Socks, right? So we need to talk about socks. So we got shape. Um, so let me just actually write it out. So we got shape, that's the S in socks. So if we look at the uh, shape, there is a gap here. So we need to talk about that gap. Uh, we need to look, talk about the symmetry, right? There's a single peak here. So this is my single peak. Um, and then uh, if we look at the, um, the uh, yeah, so there's a single peak, there's a gap. And uh, if I look at this, it, it, it's roughly symmetric. And I say that because uh, there's only one number there. There's none here, but then look at this right there. Uh, so that looks pretty similar. So like if this goes up, this goes up, this goes down here, and then it goes up like that. So so if I look at that, that kind of tells me there it's roughly symmetric, even though, even though it's not perfectly symmetric, right? Um, so we're gonna say it's, you know, roughly symmetric is, is, is fair to say here. All right, so we're gonna say uh, the distribution is roughly symmetric with a single peak. A single peak is uh, at the 17 stem, right? The uh, the 17, the low 17 stem, right? Um, so single peak near 17.0 to 17.4 um, stem. All right, so that's the low stem. So this is the 17L stem, if you will. All right, and then of course we have a gap, so we need to talk about that gap. So there is a gap 
uh, from 18.0 to 19.2 grams or to 18 or to 18.9s rather sorry to 18.9 grams that's this gap right here from 18.0 to 18.9 that's where this ends right uh, we don't want to include up to uh, it's just before the 19 stem basically that's what we're saying so 19.2 gram uh, stems okay all right so there's our shape now we got to talk about the outliers if there's any that's the O in socks um, so here it looks like uh, it looks like the 19.2 appears to be an outlier uh, so I say that um, because there's a gap here there's this gap and then you got this outlier okay so 19.2 grams appears to be an outlier All right, and then we got the C and SOX, which stands for center. So we got to figure out what the center value is here, the middle value, the median. Uh, so the median mass is, we got to figure out what the median is. So the median is going to be, should be in the middle here, since it's roughly symmetric, it should be right, right around there. But there's 17 bars. So that means if there's 17 bars, that means there's one middle number. And that middle number has to be um, the ninth number, right, um, in the pattern, right? So, um, so we got uh, one. So that's one, that's two, three, four. Keep going. Oh, when I do that, I gotta, I gotta actually, yeah. So this one here. Let me, let me do it again. Sorry, I messed up there. So I gotta do this one. Then this one, this one, and this one, that and this, that, and this, one, two, one, two. So there's that one middle number right there, which is the 17.1. Okay. Uh, so the median mass is 17.1 grams. All right. So now we got, uh, now we need the S in socks. Uh, so that stands for the spread. Okay, so the spread is the variability. So uh, the masses vary from uh, 15.9 to 19.2 grams. So the lowest is 15.9 and the highest is 19.2. All right, and there's how you describe the distribution. All right, using that uh, graph, the stem plot. Now let's look at another one. So now this time we're going to make a back-to-back uh, -back stem plot. So this is where a back-to-back -back stem plot is when you're comparing two uh, data sets, right? You're comparing them to each other, and so you're putting them into one stem plot that helps you compare them. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do the American League on the left and then the National League on the right. So let me do American League here. All right, and... Um, we're gonna do some stem, uh, some stems here. Stems go in the middle in this part, and then we got the National League. Okay, and then I'll show you how to do the key for these as well, uh, just so that you know how to how to do it. Uh, all right, so here we go. So our smallest stem here is uh, out of all of the data is uh, looks like. We got 29, we got 21 as a um, stem here, looks like. And uh, looks like the largest is 363. So we're gonna go, ahead, go from 21 um, to three, or 236 when we, when we do these uh, stems, okay? So it's a lot, of, a lot of stems here, but that's okay. So we're gonna do 21, equal to 36. And again, we don't want to skip the stems uh, in the middle at all uh, when we do this. Okay, so we got 219. So that's going to go to National League. So when we do National League, we go left to right. When we do American League, we go right to left. So we got 219. The leaf is 9 for that, right? Uh, so we took care of that. Let's just do the National League uh, first while we're doing it, while we're at it. 
Um, okay, so we got 219 for, for that. Uh, we got, do we have any 22s here? Um, no stems of 22s, but we do have a stem of, of 23 here, right? With a leaf of eight. Um, and then let's see, do we have any other 23s? Um, no. So we got there, we have, we got 238, okay? So that takes care of that. Um, now, do we have any 24s? Um, here we do have a 24 stem, right? Um, with a six leaf. Are there anything, anything, any other 24s? There is a 24 there with a, with a leaf of seven. So we got to do it from left to right, smallest to largest. Um, all right, and that's it for 24s. Any 25s? There is a 25 here with a leaf of five, and then there's 25 with a leaf of nine. So five, nine. And then we're going to 26. So here we got 263 and no other 26 stems. So 26 there. Uh, 274 for the 27, 273. So we got three and then a four. Uh, three and then four. Uh, 28, we got a 283, so that's three. We got a 280, so that's zero. We got a 281, so zero, one, and three. For the 28s, uh, I think that's it. We got 129, so that's a seven, 297. We got um, a, th a 30, right? So that's 30 and a two, so that's a two there. And we got 322, so that's right there. That takes care of the National League. And then um, then we'll go ahead and uh, do the, that'll be it. We'll have to make the key, of course. All right, so we got the American League. Uh, American League is on the left side. So here we got, um, so here we're gonna do it from right to left. So do we have any 21s? Um, no 21s, 22s, uh, no 22s, we got a 23 here, right? So that's 237, and I think that's it for the 23. So we got 237, uh, we got 20, do we have a 24? Yep, we have 247, 249, um, yep, 247, 249. So that's gonna be seven and then nine, so we gotta do that from right to left. So that's how we do the order. We do the order like that, okay? Uh, that's supposed to be a nine right there. All right, so then we got 25s. Uh, we got 250. I thought I saw 250 somewhere. 254. Uh, let's see, 254. And I think that's it for the 25. So we just got a four. All right, do we need 26s? We have 266. Uh, 266, uh, 262, so that's a two and then a six. Uh, and then that's a two and a six, so two, six there. Uh, 27s, any 270, 273, 270, so zero and then three. Okay, 28, we got a five. Um, yep, so we got, looks like we got 285. 29, we got a zero, a two, so 290, 292, so zero, two, and then a six here, and then an eight, zero, two, six, and eight. All right, and then we got uh, 301, and we got 363, the largest data point. All right, so there's our back-to-back -back stem plot, so then we're gonna do a key here. So there's a couple of ways that you could do the key. Um, so you could say, okay, so if I did this data point right here, that's 219, right? So I could do 21 slash 19, and sometimes I'll do a double because we got the two things here. 21 slash nine uh, represents uh, a National League team that hits 204, uh, 19, sorry, 219 doubles. And then I'm gonna do another one just to be safe. So if I do this one, that's gonna be seven slash 23, right? That's what that represents. Um, so, oops, I didn't mean to erase that thing there. Uh, so seven slash the double 23 represents American League team that hits 237 doubles, right? That's what that represents. Okay, so you can use either one of those uh, to use the key. If you do both, that's even better. 
Okay, so that takes care of um, part A. Uh, now we're gonna say which of the league, the two leagues typically hit more doubles? Okay, so if it says typically hits more doubles, that just means uh, we're looking for the median, right? So the typically, so uh, where's the middle, right? Where's the center of this is what basically what they're, what they're asking for. So what's the center of the National League and American League? Whichever one has a greater center, hits more doubles on average, right? Or typically. All right, so let's do the uh, center. So we got one, two. So let me show you with the mouse here. So one, two, one, two. We're just working our way towards the middle. One, two. So I, I guess I'll, I'll mark it. So we got one, two, one, two, one, two. Oops, I, forgot. I need to ca cancel this one out. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So it looks like it's 273 for the National League. So let me get rid of those um, 273 for the National League. Just gonna get rid of those um, marks there. All right, so 273, so the center uh, for the National League, I'm just gonna put the center for this guy, is 273. Uh, and we'll put the center for this guy over here, and then we'll use that to answer part B. Uh, okay, so we got one, Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, um, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it looks like it's a uh, two seventy, two hundred and seventy, because that it, that is at that zero, right? Okay, so it looks like two seventy for that one. So the center is 270. So you can clearly see which one won out. It appears that the National League won out here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna double check uh, the uh, numbers here. Let me double check to make sure I got the right center for American League. Okay, so let, let me double check that one more time. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, that's why, because I I um I cross out the six. So it should be this one, two, one, two, one, two. That's why. Okay. So sorry, I, I crossed out the top one first. I should have crossed out the. I should have gone from right to left. Uh, so the middle here is two seventy three. Sorry about that. So they they both have the typical um same the same center here. So uh, for part B, we're gonna say that they uh there is no one that's great which of the two leagues typically hit more doubles um both leagues typically hit about 273 doubles so here they're uh, both are technically the same if you look at the data uh same center uh even though you know they're um the data looks different um, so now let's take a look at the, the third part. So are the shapes of the distributions similar or different in the two leagues, right? Um, so let's look at the uh, shape. Okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, so the shape. So the shapes are, are, are different, right? Uh, the shape of the National League um, is roughly symmetric. Uh, or slightly skewed left. It's slightly skewed left because if you look at this, it looks like it has a slight skew to the left. It's roughly symmetric, but there's a skew to the left where, where the smaller numbers on that left tail, which is the top tail in this case, uh, look a little longer. Uh, so in this case, we'll say slightly or slight skew to the left. And the shape of the American League, I believe that's the American, yeah, the American League is, it looks like it's slightly skewed, it looks like it's skewed to the right, because look at this long tail there, um, because of that outlier. So uh, is skewed to the right with an outlier of 336 hits. 
or 336 doubles. Okay, so there it takes care of that problem. Uh, so we talked about the shape. Um, you know, they, they both have gaps, so that's similar. They both have a single peak, uh, but the, we're looking at the differences here, uh, similar or different, so we justify our answer. Okay, so let's look at uh, lesson five, the histogram. Uh, there's, we still got a lot to cover uh, in this review guide. So uh, what can we learn from the past, making a histogram? So uh, we got ancient Egyptian embalming techniques, uh, can preserve bodies remarkably well. So we got some um, data on measurements of dirty Egyptian skulls. Uh, make a frequency histogram to display this data. Use intervals of width 5 beginning at 115 millimeters. So on the test, if they don't give you the interval or the uh, or the size or anything like that, then you have to actually calculate it using the class width formula, right? The maximum minus minimum. But here they give it to you so you don't have to um, do anything, all right? So here they say use intervals of width 5. Uh, so that means they're giving your, your class width is 5, okay? And they're saying beginning at 115. So uh, you're going to do your end. You're going to do your classes, your interval, or I'm um, not interval. I'm sorry. Your frequency. <laughs> your classes are your intervals. Okay. So it says beginning at 115. So normally you would start with your smallest number, right? Uh, and your smallest number for the skulls. Um, well. There's a lot of skull widths, but it uh, looks like the smallest number, it appears to be maybe 124. No, there's a 119 there, right? So we generally, would, you know, we would start at 119, and then we would go by whatever our class width is. But here they said start at 115, so that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go from 115, and then we're going to add 5 to that. 115 plus 5 is 120, so less than 120. And then 120 to less than 125, 125 to less than 130. And the way you know when to stop is when you reach your biggest number. Your biggest number for the skulls is in the 140s. Where was it? I, uh, it was right here somewhere. 141. You make sure you include that, OK? Uh, so that's your largest. And we can't include that. We need one more class to include the 141. Uh, okay. So we know, obviously, no, we know that this one was that there. Okay. Uh, so if you uh, start, so here's from 115 to 119, right? So 115 to 119. So we got um, 115. So that's uh, 119. That's one. And that's it. There's only one. So there's one there. So one here. There's one there. Uh, 120 to 124, because you got to be less than 120 to 124. Um, so here, 120 to 124. Okay. 124 right here. So that's one. Okay, and then the next one should have a lot. 125 to 129. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, next one's 130 to 134. That one should also have a lot. 130 to 134. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve. All right, and then the last ones one thirty five to one thirty nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's my um, frequency table, and then we can make our histogram from that. All right, so we got our frequency on the y-axis. We got here the, um, uh, let's see, uh, the, the measurements of the skulls, right? So uh, the skull width in millimeters.
Okay, and we'll go we'll go by uh, the biggest frequency is twelve, so we'll just go by ones. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And uh, we'll do our classes, so 115 to 120 to 125 to 130, so on and so forth. Okay, so for here we got a um, height of one, we got a height of one here, here we got a height of eight, from there to there. We got a height of 12 from there to there. Um, we got a height of seven for the next one, and then a height of one. All right, so there's our histogram. Um, so that's a frequency histogram for the data. Again, if they don't give you the uh, intervals or anything like that, what we would do is we would do the, um, so this is just a, a, a side note. Um, we would calculate the class width. We would take our, our maximum minus the minimum, divide by the number of classes. And we have to choose that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say if we, let's say we choose six classes. Let's say we chose so choose from five to ten classes. Here, uh, if we choose six, then we have six on the bottom, right? And then our biggest number is one forty-one. Our smallest number was the one nineteen, right? Uh, we would subtract those, and then we would get a calculation. So let's see what that is. One forty-one minus one nineteen. I'm just trying to show you, just in case you have the test and they don't tell you what to do. Uh, so here you're going to go 22 divided by 6. This is about, uh, this is uh, 3.67, which you're going to bump it up to 4. You always bump it up, right? Uh, so you bump those up to 4, and then uh, you start from your smallest class, right? So, or your smallest number. So 141, and then add 4 to that to less than, or I'm sorry, the smallest class was 119. 119 to less than 123, uh, right? And so on and so forth. Notice that's slightly different. Oh, was it was yeah. The smallest was <coughs> I believe it was 119 um in the data, if I'm not mistaken. We got somewhere around there. Um let me double check. Yeah, it was 119, this guy 119. And you would set it up that way. Notice it's slightly different than this, right? But that's perfectly fine if it's slightly different than what they instructed on here because if they don't give you the instructions then you have to figure out what you need to do right and so this is what you would have to do you would choose you know how many classes you want or whatever um but this is how you would do it if they give you no instructions whatsoever and then you keep doing that all right okay so here we go uh learning target one five two so um we're going to describe um and talk, look at the histogram so looking at the uh egyptian Skull data one two three this one two three four five six seven eight they use eight classes in this one here we use six classes right um so when we use eight classes um this says what percent of egyptian males have skull widths of at least 133 okay so at least 133 means greater than or equal to so it could be equal to 133 right um so that means we could do here 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 so we need all those bars so let's add all these guys uh first let's count up all the his all the uh egyptians there's one here there's that's a that's five there's four um i think there were 30 but I, i'm or however many but let me double check there's four there uh here there's nine here there's five Here, that's three three okay so we got uh, the total is one plus five plus four plus nine plus five plus three plus three so that's the total so we're gonna add those up okay so we'll just do that real quick okay yeah so there were 30 so we're 30 total and we want to add these up so that's gonna be uh, so here is gonna be five plus three plus three divided by 30 it's going to be 11 divided by 30 Egyptians. Uh, so that's going to be uh, times 100 is 36.7% have skull widths greater than or equal to 133. Describe the shape of the two of the two graphs. 
are there any outliers? Okay, so um, we did a we did a histogram earlier, and we're comparing it to this histogram here. So we need we want to describe uh, the shapes. So if I look at the uh, first one, the one that we just drew here, um, let's see. Um, it looks to be uh, slightly skewed to the left. Um, right, it looks to be slightly skewed to the left, or you could say roughly symmetric because it, it does have some symmetry to it. Um, so you could say roughly symmetric for that. Uh, here you could also say um, skewed to the left or roughly symmetric. I would say roughly symmetric for both of these. Yeah, there's uh, some, these are there's some low here, nothing there, but if I, you know, it's rough, it's, it's a rough uh, symmetry. Okay, so uh, I would say that both distributions are roughly symmetric. Um, the original has a peak uh, between, I think the peak was 130 to 135, yeah, between 130 and 135. And the second um, has between 130 and 133. Okay, um, there in the second histogram, there does appear to be this potential outlier, right? Which does not seem to show uh, here, right? It doesn't seem to show that there, um, but it does seem to show in the first one. Um, the second, oh, I'm gonna just say the second has a peak there, with a potential outlier between 118 and 121. Okay, all right, so there's the, um, the kind of description between those. Um, Estimate the center and variability of the distribution of skull widths for these ancient Egyptians. So, so the center and variability. Uh, okay, so we got the center and spread. Okay, so for these Egyptians, um, it's, so okay, so we got one. Uh, there's thirty of them. Halfway is, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be the sixteenth number, or like between the sixteenth and the seventeenth, right? So. Um, or between the 15th and the 16th number, rather, right? Between the 15th and the 16th number. Um, so here we got 1 plus 5, that's 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. And then we got 19. Okay, that means that the middle has to be there. So uh, the center, um, in this case, the median, right? is in 130 to, hunt to um, less than 133 miller, millimeters uh, interval or group, whatever you want to call it. And the uh, widths vary from, now let's look at the, the spread, right? The variability, they vary from um, at least 118 to at most 142, okay? All right, there you go. Okay, so that takes care of 152, describing histograms. So now let's look at a uh, comparing histogram. So now we're gonna compare these two uh, histograms. So it says in commercials for bounty paper tiles and manufacturer claims that they are quicker, they are the quicker picker upper. Um, but are, are they also the stronger picker upper? So we look at uh, a random sample of 30 bounty paper tiles and a random sample of 30 generic ones. And we graph. We so we soak them in four ounces of water, 
uh, and then we count how many quarters each paper towel could hold until ripping, alternating brands. All right, so we collected the data on that. So how many quarters can they hold? Looks like um, Bounty, overall the median for Bounty is greater than the generic one, just comparing these, right? So if you just kind of look at that. So uh, remember when we compare, we need socks, right? So we need to compare the shape, outliers, all that good stuff. Okay, so the shape, the distribution of, uh, so, so uh, distribution, of bounty is what so if we look at it it looks like um it if we look at these if there's a slight skew to the left there right you can see that um there's a, there's a peak here by the way right there but it looks like overall it's a slight skew to the left if we just if we just ignore the minor ups and downs it looks like slight skew to the left is slightly skewed to the left uh, whereas the generic distribution is the generic distribution appears to be slightly uh, slightly uh, roughly symmetric rather so it, there seem to be a, a, a sort of uh, symmetry there if you can see that right um, is roughly symmetric okay um and then let's look at the outliers so we got shape outliers are there any potential um there doesn't seem appear to be any outliers so no apparent outliers because we don't see any gaps or anything like that uh center Okay, so center uh, bounty paper towels. Let's look at that one. So, um, so here um, we look for the fifty percent mark. So this is fi uh, this is about five percent. That's about uh, seven and a half percent. So that's so uh, this is five percent. I think this is a roughly five percent. This is uh, both of these together are fifteen percent. So that's already twenty percent. Now this one right here is 25%, so that's already now 50% right there, which means that uh, when we get to, so this right here is 50%, which means when we get to here, that is going to be the middle, right? It's gonna it's gonna be marking here, here and on, it's gonna be the other, the other 50%. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this right here and on is to 50%. So uh, that seems to be around, so this is 110 here. This is there and this is there. So that appears to be breaking it into four pieces, 100 and, um, uh, so yeah, that appears to be around 116-ish, uh, right? So this is approximately 116 quarters, right? For that right there. Um, so, okay, so we'll say that. The uh, center uh, the center bounty distribution, which is uh, 116 quarters, is higher than the, the other distribution. Now we're gonna say the, the other distribution. So the other distribution, if we look at it, um, so again, this is 10, 10, so this is 20%. This is, uh, this is already, that's, uh, that's about 27.5%. So right now, this is about 47.5%. And so when we get to here, this has gotta be the middle now, right? Because that's already above 50% uh, 50 and above. So the middle is around here which is approximately 90, we'll just say about 90 quarters, okay? Approximately 90, okay? All right, so now we're looking at the uh, spread. So, so we got the S, the last part of socks. So spread. 
So uh, the spread seems to be about the same for both of them. So here, this is right uh, about 76 or so, maybe 102-ish. Um, this is uh, maybe 98-ish. This is maybe 128-ish. We're just kind of estimating. So from here to here, from 198 minus or 128 minus 98, that's about 30. Uh, 102 <coughs> minus 76, that's about 26-ish. So they're roughly the same. Um, the uh, spread of both distributions is roughly the same and i'll say bounty is a bit more spread out um approximately 30 versus 26 so what we could say that i mean if you say it for roughly the same i would take it that's fine um but yeah bounty is a little bit more spread out okay so we got uh, less than 1.6 measuring the center so now uh, we're at, we're like uh, the one six, then we got one seven, one eight. Here uh, one six. Some of the stuff is one six is easy. Some of the some of it you know takes more work. Uh, here it says you just want to find the median and interpret. So we can get to this one really quick. Um, you first you got to put the data in order. So let's do that first. So we got forty seven. Got fifty five. We got, I think, two 60s. Yep, two 60s. We got 61, Ninety, ninety-six, and a hundred. Okay, so there you go. So that's in order, and then you're going to find the middle number. So you work your way towards the middle. So you got one. Uh, so if you do this, you got one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So that's your middle. That's your median. Okay. So the median equals 70. These are heart rates, so 70 beats per minute. Um, so um, so if we interpret it, that means half of the students had a, a, a heart rate less than 70. So uh, interpretation, so now half of students have heart rate less than 70 BPM and about half have heart rates greater than 70 BPM. Okay, so there's your interpretation and done. All right, so 1.62, here are the population densities, so along with a dot plot. So population densities for the seven countries in Central America along with a dot plot. So this is nice to give you the data and a dot plot. Uh, calculate the mean population density. So you just gotta calculate the mean. Okay, so let's do that here. The mean uh, is gonna be X bar. So we're gonna calculate the average for that. So again, to calculate the average, we gotta add up the data points, divide by how many we have, right? So uh, just add them up. We got 13 plus 82 plus dot 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 all the way to 84 or 44 and we have seven countries. So if we add them up, divide by seven, we get 95.9 um, people per kilometer squared. All right, so that takes care of A, uh, the dot plot. So um, part P. So the dot plot suggests that El Salvador may, may be an outlier. Calculate the mean population density for the other six countries. What do you notice? Okay, so El Salvador is a um, potential outlier. So if we cross that out and calculate the new X bar, uh, this time dividing by six, we got 13 plus 82 plus dot, 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 
Uh, in fact, I'm going to include here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to do that plus dot 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 plus 44. This time divided by six, and we get 63.2 people per kilometer squared. Okay, so what happens is that um, El Salvador uh, increased the population, the mean population density, um, by a good amount, right? So El Salvador. increased mean population density by so uh, if we subtract these 95.9 .9, if I subtract those two that's uh, 20 or 32.7 so by 32.7 people per kilometer squared all right so it increased it a lot. So um, we noticed that it's a big decrease if we exclude it or a big, big increase if we include it, right? All right, so 163. All right, so this is uh, 2004. The Boston Red Sox won their first World Series in 86 years, breaking the so-called curse of the Pambino. There were many memorable moments in the World Series, including a red moon resulting from a partial lunar eclipse on the night that they won their game. So we got the batting, batting averages for the Red Star, Sox starting lineup for Game 3, including the designator hitter, David Ortiz, and Game 3 starting pitcher, Pedro Martinez. So we got their uh, batting averages here, and they give us our median, and they also give us our average. So they're asking, why is the mean so, um, smaller than the uh, median? Well, if you look at this, we have a distribution that's skewed to the right. Correct. So because it's skewed to the right, you got that outlier. It's pulling the mean in that direction, right? So uh, for here, for part A, uh, the mean is pulled toward the long left tail. because the distribution is skewed to the left. Okay, so uh, skewed to the left. Um, so, um, and the outlier is gonna lower that mean, right? So if it's, uh, so that means that that's why it's going to be smaller then, right? Because it's being pulled to the left and therefore uh, it's less than. Uh, which measure center better describes a typical batting average for these players? So because it's skewed and you have an outlier, you want to make sure you use the median, okay? So the median uh, better describes the center, right? Better describes the typical batting average. because the distribution is skewed to the left with an outlier. All right, so anytime you have um, you know skew distributions, you generally want to use the median versus the mean, right? Because the mean got pulled to the left because of the, the, the outlier, and therefore you don't want to use that as a um, to describe the typical batting average, okay? When you have the median, which does a better job. All right, so uh, you got here 1.7. Um, now we're, so we're done with 1.6 already. So now 1.7, this is really quick. Find the range of this distribution. So you got the uh, 2013 NFL regular season for the Denver Broncos. And so you're looking at the number of points scored uh, for their games, the 16 games. Um, so here, find the range. So you had some really, really good scores, but then you know you had a really, really low score. So the uh, highest score here was 52, and the lowest score is 20, right? So 52 minus 20. Uh, 32 uh, points. And that's it. That's it for the range. That's all you have to do. Um, all right, so uh, learning target 172. Uh, 11 high school students were asked how many close friends they have. Here are their responses along with a dot plot. Calculate their standard deviation. All right, so let's write down the formula for their standard deviation. 
The formula for the sample standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the values of the sum of the squared deviations. Uh, the deviations are the values, the different the distance between the value and the average, right? The mean squared. All right, so you got to add those up. Then you got to do divide them by n minus one. Okay, uh, and we're going to interpret this value. Uh, after we calculate it. So in order to calculate this, we need a table that has the x, the uh, x minus x bar, and x minus x bar squared. So we're going to do this. We're going to have x minus x bar, and we're going to have x minus x bar squared, right? Uh, and in order to calculate this, we would need to know what x bar is. So let's figure out what x bar is. We need to, we're going to put all these numbers down here. And they don't have to be in order when you do this, by the way. It's just, having them order just makes it a little bit easier, but it's not uh, necessary. All right, so here are the x bar. So if I add if I add these up, if I do the total for these, what do I get? So we want to figure that out first. Um, so when I add those up, I should get 33. And then to get the x bar, I got to do this, the total divided by n, and the total is 33, the n is 11. We have 11 people, right? So the x bar is 3. Okay, so 3 is my average. So I got to do 1 minus 3. Oops, my uh, pen is acting up here, sorry. 1 minus 3. equals negative 2. Uh, we got 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. We got 3 minus 3 equals 0. All right, we take the x value of 4 minus the mean of 3 is 1, and then we 6 minus the mean of 3 is 3. Okay, and that gives us our second column. Then we got to square it. Why? Because the formula has the squared in it, so we have to square it. Okay, so we got to do negative 2 squared is 4. You will never get negative numbers from this. Please do not put negative numbers on this column. A lot of students do this, even though I mention it a lot of times. Do not put a negatives in this column because a, num a negative number squared is positive. Okay, so when you square the number, ignore the negatives, right? Um, so negative 1 squared is 1. You got 1, 1. Because if you put negatives here, you're going to get the wrong answer. Because zero squared is zero. These are all zeros. We got one squared is one. That's one. Three squared is nine. All right, now we're going to do the total of this column. So the total, the sum of x minus x bar squared. We've got to add that column, all right? Uh, so we're going to add those up. So if I add that column up, four plus one plus one plus one plus zero, all that stuff, I get 18. All right, so now we got the standard deviation equals the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus one equals the square root. Now I'm gonna plug that into there, right? Uh, that's 18 divided by 11 people minus one. So I got the square root of 18 divided by 10, which is the square root of 1.8, which I can do the square root of that. That's uh, 1.34, close friends. All right, so that's my standard deviation. All right, so what does that mean? So the interpretation, so that means that the number of close friends that these students typically have uh, changes or varies from the average by 1.34. Okay, so that's what it means. So the number of close friends um, the students have typically varies from the mean. by about 1.34, uh, close friends. OK, 
Okay. All right, so there's your standard deviation. That's probably the hardest calculation that students will need to do, I think, you know, uh, and then interpret. That's the most involved calculation. Okay, all right, so 1.73, how, var how variable is that offense? So we're gonna find and interpret the IQR. So here again on the same number for the Denver Broncos. Find the interquartile range and interpret this value. So we just gotta find the interquartile range. Uh, so first, um, we need to put it in order. Okay, so let's let's uh, sort. All right, so we got 20, 27, 28, 31, 33, 34, 35, another 35. 237s, 41, 45, 49, 251s, and 52. Okay, so um, so first do, we need to find the median, the middle number. Okay, so the median uh, is going to be uh, halfway between 35 and 37. Again, uh, because if you cross these out, um, we got 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oops, it's not, I wrote the wrong one here. One, two, so it's halfway between these two. Okay, so the median here, um, the second quartile or the median, same thing, is 35 plus 37 divided by two, which is 36. All right, now you have you have two parts of the data. You have this part and you have this part. So now you gotta find the middle of the left part and then the right part, okay? We got one, two, one, two, one, two. You got two middle numbers here between 31 and 33. So you gotta add them up, divide by two. So that gives you a first quartile of 32. All right, one, two, one, two, one, two. So between 45 and 49. Add one divided by two and you get 47. Okay, and your interquartile range is your third quartile minus your first quartile. So you got 47 minus 32, which is 15, 15 points. And so what that is saying is that, so we're gonna interpret it. Uh, sorry for the writing there, the pen's acting up. Uh, so the interpretation is that this is the middle 50% of the data. So from here to here, this is representing the, the range, right? From here to here, the range of the middle 50%. This is 50% of the data right here. This is 25% and then this is another 25%. So this is representing the range of the middle 50%. Okay, so the range of the middle 50% of scores for the Broncos is 15 points. Okay, so there you go, that takes care of that. Takes care of that problem, so that's IQR. All right, we're at 1.8 now. Okay, so 1.81. So um, we did 1.7, now we're at 1.8. So 1.8, the last lesson of the chapter. Uh, in a recent year, consumer reports rated many tablet computers for overall performance and quality. One variable measured was the depth or thickness of each tablet in inches. The depths of the 23 tablets produced by the Samsung are given. Uh, so these are the, the depths of the tablets. All right. Identify any outliers in a distribution. Okay. So first off, we got to put these uh, in order and we got to find the quartiles. So yeah, that's a, a tedious task, let's just say. 
So I'm gonna put I'm gonna just put these in order, uh, and then we'll identify the quartiles. Okay, so just to save you uh, some time, here are the data points in order. Uh, so now we can easily identify the median. The median has to be um, this number in the middle because I, the way I divided it, I divided it so you can see the left half and the right half, right, easily. Okay, so this has got to be the second quartile is 0 0.33. And then we can figure out what the first quartile is. So we got 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So it's got to be, uh, this has got to be my first quartile, one middle number. And this has got to be my third quartile, one middle number. Okay, so now we can find the IQR is the third quartile minus the first quartile. And then we're going to multiply that by 1.5. So to identify outliers, we need to use the 1.5 IQR rule. So we take the IQR and we multiply it by 1.5. And we do this, we get one, uh, 0 0.09, okay? And so now to get the low outlier, the low outliers have to be less than the first quartile minus the 1.5 IQR, okay? In this case, the first quartile we said was 0 0.32 minus the 0 0.06 or 0 0.09 that we already calculated for the 1.5 IQR. That's gonna give us 0 0.23. The high outlier has to be greater than the third quartile plus the 1.5 IQR. So the third quartile is 0.38 plus the 0 0.09 that we calculated that's 0.47. So low outliers have to be less than 0.23 millimeters. High outliers have to be greater than 0.47 millimeters. There are no values less than 0.23 because the smallest is 0.27. Um, there's one outlier on the right. Uh, there's one value that is greater than uh, 0.47 and that's the 0.48, okay? So there's one high outlier. So there is one high outlier of 0 0.48 millimeters, which is greater than the 0.47, right? Um, so there you go. So uh, the tablet that has 0.48 millimeters thickness is the outlier. All right, so um, here's the next one, 1.82. Uh, some students purchase pumpkins for a carving contest. Before the be contest begin, they weigh the pumpkins. They, the weights and pounds are shown here. So make a box plot to display the data. And then the farmer, uh, so let's do that first. So the, let's make the box plot. So first we gotta uh, put these data in order. So I'll do that real quick. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, put these in order and you can clearly see that uh, this has to be the median. So that's the second quartile is 6.6. .6. We got the uh, lower half of the data and we got the upper half of the data here. And we can identify that um, this right here has to be my first and the third quartile. That's a 12.7 uh, right there. It's hard, kind of hard to tell. All right, so uh, those are my first and the third quartiles. Put them in order. So we're going to check for outliers, all right? So we got the IQR. We got the third minus the first quartile. That's going to be 8.7 pounds. Uh, low outlier. So the low outlier is less than, the high outlier is greater than. So the low outlier is less than the first quartile minus, uh, minus the uh, 1.5 IQR. <clears throat> It's negative four, um, negative four point seven. Let me make sure. Oh, actually, did I? Oh, I didn't multiply by the uh, one point five IQR. I'm sorry. I got to do the uh, one point five IQR. I just went straight to the IQR. So I got one point five times eight point seven. Sorry for the writing. I gotta, I gotta fix this pen. 
Uh, so times 8.7. So when I do that, let's see, let's figure out what that is. Um, that's 13.05. Okay, sounds good. And then the low outlier is less than the first quartile minus that. That gives us negative 9.05. The high outlier is greater than the third quartile plus that. Uh, which is 25.75. Okay, so we can see that the pumpkins that are 31 and 33 pounds are outliers, right? So therefore, we got some outliers here. Okay, so we got uh, two high outliers. Um, so what we're going to do is when we do the um, five number summary, we're gonna say our minimum is, our smallest number is 2.0 pounds for the pumpkin. No outliers there. Uh, our first quartile was 4.0. Our second quartile, the median was 6.6. .6. Our third quartile is 12.7. Our maximum is technically the 33, but we're gonna do 15.0 with a high outlier of 31.0 and 33.0. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and do the, the box plot. So we're gonna start at zero. This is the uh, pumpkin weight. In pounds. So we'll go ahead and go by fives. So zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. So we have the minimum is uh, two, so it's like, uh, it's halfway between zero and five, almost halfway. Uh, the first quartile is four, so it's like around here. Um, we got 6.6, .6, so it's like around here. Um, we got the third quartile is 12.7, so it's like halfway here. And we got our uh, maximum before we hit the outliers of 15 here. And we got our outliers of 31 here and then 33-ish there. So we got our whisker there. We got our box. We got our other whisker right there. All right, so there is our box plot. So now the part B is saying the, the farmer who grew these pumpkins told the students that the pumpkins from his farm weighed 14 pounds on average. Does the graph give convincing evidence that the students were uh, cheated? So were the students cheated considering that the average, the farmer said, right, that the average was 14 pounds, right? Uh, so is there convincing evidence that they were cheated? That's what we're gonna try to explain. Well, if you look at it, 14 pounds, right, is um, right around here. And that was supposed to be the average. Well, if you look at this, this is 25%, 25%, 25%, and then a little bit extra. So about 75% or more of these pumpkins, almost, yeah, about 75%, actually more than 75%, between 75 and 100%, of the pumpkins were actually less than the average. So yes, they were cheated, right? <laughs> so it appears that there's evidence that they were cheated. So for part B, I'm gonna say yes. Um, so it says about 75% or more weighed way less than on the average of 14 pounds. Um, so which is convincing evidence that the farmer has pumpkins that are less than 14 pounds. 
All right, so most of those pumpkins are for less than 14 pounds. We can't really say that the average has to, is more as 14 pounds because we have most of them being less than. So the average has to be less than that. Uh, we have some outliers, of course, you know, 30, 35 pounds, 33 pounds, but that those are outliers and those are not the norm. All right, so here we go. We got the uh, last uh, question here, which is 1.8.3, and this is comparing the box plots. So one way to measure uh, state uh, is by, or sorry, this is a uh, this is the way it's. One way to measure the wealth of a state. The, this this is weird how it's set up. One way to measure the wealth of a state is by the median household income. Here are parallel box plots. Uh, in numerical summaries of the median household income of each state, it's grouped by the region of the country that is the state is in. All the values are rounded to the nearest dollar. Okay, so we got our box plots for four different regions, if you will, um, or four different parts, right? Grouped by the country the state is in, by you know parts of the country. All right, and we want to compare. So when we compare these, so we, the, they're asking us to compare. So it doesn't actually say that here, but they want us to compare. When we compare, we want to use socks. Okay, so shape, outlier, center, all that stuff. So we got to compare that socks for all of these. Um, all right, so shape. The states in the Midwest. We got the box plus. So this is this the box plus are going to help us a lot. So let's look at skewed. So um, here, this is skewed right. Uh, if we look at the here, this has a longer uh, right tail, so that's skewed right. Uh, here, this is skewed left. Here, this is skewed right. So it appears that all of the regions have a distribution skewed right, except for west. Right? It appears that the, the states in the west have an in, have an income distribution that's skewed to the left. Okay, so. Um, So we're going to say the states in the Midwest, Northeast, and South have incomes skewed to the right. And those in the West have Income distribution skewed to the left. All right, so then we could talk about outliers. Uh, so any outliers? Well, it appears that South has a couple outliers. The rest of them do not, right? So states in the states in the South. have two outliers, and those two outliers were 86,051. And what was the other one in the south? There's two in the south. Um, can't see it in there. Oh, okay, so that was the that was the maximum on there. Base, that was the maximum before you hit the, um, yeah, that was the maximum including the outliers. So this actually includes the outlier. So that's 86,000, so you know, around 85, 86,000, okay? Um, so the, the states in the south have two outliers in, uh, around 85 to 86,000 uh, dollars. All right. Um, and then we got center. They actually give you the center here. They give you the medians so you can kind of compare. Uh, the medians uh, for northeast is the greatest, right? Uh, and then the medians for the median for uh, income for South is the smallest. Okay, so uh, the median income in Northeast and West states were typically higher And then we'll give it the values. These values come from you know the the chart there. Um, typically higher than the Midwest, 
which was $63,201 and the South. Okay, uh, shape, outlier, center, and spread. So which which air, uh, states have variation that's greater? So we gotta look at the uh, IQRs. So um, so you can actually calculate the IQ. Oh, actually they give you the IQRs here, which is very nice. But you would take the third quartile minus the first quartile. That's how you get um, the IQRs. But they give it to you here, so that makes it easier. So we can see that uh, Northeast and West have the highest spread, and then um, Midwest has the lowest spread. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Um, so, variability in Northeast and West. is the greatest is greater and we'll give it those two values 14,000 and 14,302 all right greater than the south Twelve thousand three hundred and seventy four and the Midwest seven thousand six hundred ninety three. Okay, so there's the socks. Um, so that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Hope you found this useful and informative. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.